And U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is conducting a tour of four South American nations. We now welcome Professor Danny Shaw, Senior Research Fellow at the Council on Hemispheric Affairs, to discuss the motives behind this tour. Danny, thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Good evening, Danny. Um, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is en route to Colombia after having visited Suriname, Guyana, and briefly Brazil. What's the purpose of this trip? Mike Pompeo, particularly fascist, right-wing, war hawkish, uh, even for the uh, imperialists, is looking to uh, tighten this maximum pressure campaign, this hybrid war, this all-out war against the people of Venezuela. And at the height of a pandemic, it's so telling with more than 6.5 million cases of coronavirus here in the U.S., approaching 200,000 deaths, the priority of these imperialists, of these warmongers, is to continue to sanction, blockade, make life impossible for the Venezuelan people, uh, um, again, pushing for regime change, their same agenda in Minsk, Belarus right now, and of course, against Iran, against Cuba, against Nicaragua, against any country that they don't have complete control of. So we understand all too uh, clearly uh, Pompeo's motivations right now for being in Colombia. And, Danny, the U.S. continues, as you say, to up its pressure on Venezuela. With the presidential elections approaching in the United States and the parliamentary elections to be held later this year in Venezuela, where is U.S. foreign policy at in terms of Venezuela and the Americas? Well, it's amazing if you listen to CNN or Fox, you would hear such a divided uh, two-party system where the Democrats and the Republicans have this and that difference. Of course, sharp differences domestically. But when it comes to the international arena, and when it comes to U.S. foreign policy and imperialism, they always stand on the same side of the international global class war. Uh, when it comes to Venezuela, when it comes to what's happening right now in Bolivia with the fascist, racist coup there, Democrat or Republican, it's the same policy of, of sanctions, of, of hybrid war. So even if there is a Biden victory, the Biden-Harris ticket on November 3rd, there's no reason to think that. Uh, U.S. foreign policy would change in any way. They are dead set on recolonizing Venezuela, on tapping into the vast oil, gas, and mineral reserves of Venezuela. And of course, that's why Pompeo visited Guyana right now, because of these new discoveries of uh, gas and oil reserves in Guyana. And Danny, the last stop of Pompeo's tour is Colombia, where joint military exercises with the U.S. are being conducted from this Friday through Monday in the Caribbean Sea. What message does this send to neighboring Venezuela? The United States and Colombia already have Venezuela surrounded. There are U.S. troops occupying the Caribbean Sea on the Atlantic side of Venezuela, and then, of course, the Colombian-Venezuelan border. Uh, Trump sent 800 special forces troops uh, in the past few months um, to tighten up the pressure on Venezuela. As of right now, there's no international flights into Venezuela. So they're doing everything to suffocate, uh, to strangle Venezuela. This is especially cruel at the height of this pandemic against the Venezuelan people. And neither wing of the ruling class, liberal or conservative, will stop at anything until they again have Venezuela as a part of what They've considered for so long, for so long, their backyard. Look at the invasion of the Dominican Republic in 1965. Look how they've treated Puerto Rico. Look at the presence of the Guantanamo base in Cuba still. Look at the continued occupations of, of Haiti. So Venezuela, by being self-determining since 1999, when Hugo Chavez came into power and was able to set up all these social programs, this has been unforgivable to the Pompeos, the Trumps, the Pences, and the rest of the imperialist club. Danny, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to welcoming you again soon. Thank you.